Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This channel is all about my journey throughout CRNA school. Today's video is going to be on how I am studying in CRNA school. If you guys are interested, let's get into the nitty gritty. So in semester one, I was fortunate enough that my professors took most of their questions from the lectures themselves so i was really only studying off of the powerpoints but i'm learning that that's not going to be sufficient um in all the classes so i'm going to kind of go over how i've been studying and how i'm going to be studying for other classes because each class is a little bit different but I'm actually studying for a test on Tuesday and it's for my advanced patho class so what I've been doing is listening to the lectures so thankfully he records the lectures as um, he's as he's teaching in class and it coincides with the actual PowerPoint so I'm watching the lectures like and I have my own notes and then while I'm in class I've already explained how I take notes on OneNote and you can click on this video I'm gonna link it up here now um how i take my notes in one note but what i do is while he's lecturing i'll jot down a few things because i mean it's all right there i don't need to write down word for word what he's saying but like if he says things like oh you might want to know this for the test you know i'll put a little star like i'll circle something highlight something those kind of things and then um what i do is when i get home at some point i watch the lectures so I have them on, on one computer and I have my iPad open where I took my notes and then from there I actually jot down kind of like word for word some things that he mentions that I don't know. Like if I didn't know that, like it's not common knowledge, I'll write it down in a OneNote paper, like um, just basic notes in general, like a review note of the lecture. So I don't know why I'm not breathing. <laughs> so. While I'm listening to the lecture, looking at my notes that I took in class, I'm jotting down some important key points from the lecture itself. And then I have open also a Quizlet where I'm putting only certain bullet points. Like um, if I want to just compare three different things, you know, like kind of like a mix and match. I'm not making it so that it's a really big Quizlet. I don't have that many. Like this last one I have, it's three lectures and I only have 80 uh, Quizlet um, slides. That's I guess that's what they're called, or cards. So usually what I would do is put a bullet point for each, like each card was a bullet point. So then I would end up with like 559 things that I had to review and I'm like, man, it's almost easier for me just to review the lecture at that point because I'm now I'm going into something bigger, you know, like I want something to be more condensed, not bigger. So I'm listening to the lectures, looking at the notes that I took in my lectures, writing down key points from each lecture and making Quizlet cards to quiz me afterwards. So I have it all there. I listen to the lecture, do the Quizlet, listen to the lecture, do the Quizlet. So then I'm repeating. All it is is repeating, 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 repeating because I feel like repetition is the only way for it to stick in this little noggin here, especially one that's overworked. So, and check out what I've done. You guessed it, a concept map. So. Right here I have, this is a cardiac myocyte and then you can see how the like uh, electrolytes cause an action potential and like how they get stopped and whatever and then like this is contraction. This here is the like the phases of the electrical cycle like um, what ions are moving and whatnot. So like phase zero, phase one, you know, whatever, whatever. This is for a cardiac myocyte. Then I have here the pressures in the like right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary artery, like that. Like this is the different pressures. Then here, this is the EKG leads, um, like where they're crossing and like what they're picking up. So like down here, if there's an infarct in the inferior portion of the heart, you'll see that in these leads and this is in the lateral portion. And like, so it tells you the lateral view, you'll see uh, issues in these leads like that. So that way I know which leads are the problem. Then, look how pretty this is. This is <laughs> the pathophysiology of um, plaque formation in an artery, so atherosclerosis. And then over here, it's the steps, like one through eight, and they're, lab they're labeled here. And then up here, I've written, um, <laughs> 
in tiny, tiny letters uh, <laughs> the um, coronary thrombosis of acute coronary syndrome. So like if you'd see it, an NSTEM, an NSTEMI or a STEMI, unstable angina, like that. So I tried to keep my concept map condensed to one page so that that way I can reference this. And this is for like the major parts of the lectures. So, and I like it, I feel like it looks nice. I mean, yes, I, I've mentioned before that these are very time consuming, but I, I feel like I need it. <laughs> I need it to survive. So that's for that particular class. Now we have this professor that I guess the class before us didn't read ahead and they have vocalized that they didn't read ahead. I'm sure that they did poorly in the test, so. They had to make a change, I guess. So they are assigning us to read ahead of time, which kind of, hold on, let me get to it. So what we have to do is look at the syllabus. We have to read chapter four and chapter eight, and she wants us to outline the chapter. So what I do, I said I was gonna just skim, look at the pa the paragraph. Okay, that, that sentence looks good, especially if it's in bold, you know, like I'll click the, I'll, I'll highlight that and, put that in the outline but really what ended up happening was that I read the whole chapter because I feel like this is like important material for CRNA based knowledge like the AANA scope of practice um like airway assessment like these are things that I actually want to know so like I actually read the chapter and <clears throat> it's actually helping <laughs> like I, I thought I was gonna hate it because I've gotten through school pretty much without reading any books. Like, I think it was one nursing class that I was on the verge of failing if I didn't do well in the final. So I think I might've read then. And that was the only time. Um, because I've always relied on the lectures. Like if I miss a few questions here and there that weren't in the lecture, like, oh, well, so be it, I didn't have time, you know? But now, you know, it, it's like, I guess because it's going from being, um, you know, a nurse to being a provider that it's like, I'm, I'm a little, I'm still a little bit of intimidated. So I want to be well versed in what, you know, everything that it entails to be a CRNA and a good provider. So I actually read <laughs> the chapters, even though that's something that I never, ever, ever used to do. Like I feel nerdy thinking about it, but I read, I'm reading ahead of time. And then this professor is lecturing, lecturing somewhat. And then it's not like it's the first time that I'm hearing it, so I don't feel like, oh, what, what are we gonna learn next? Like, I've never been one to read ahead, and I guess it's just because it's been so much material time after time, and also a bit of procrastination that I never really got to it. So for this class, we're reading ahead and then outlining the chapter, she's lecturing, and then we'll have a test eventually. But what's so great is that it helps for my other classes like the health assessment class that I have we're learning about the airway assessment and we just covered that like in the chapters that we outlined so I'm like little by little we're actually studying for both classes so it doesn't feel so much of like wasted time I don't mind it <laughs> don't repeat those words but yes so I actually have to get back to studying for this test but if I could, in a nutshell, tell you my strategies for studying, I listen in the lectures closely, I pay attention, write my notes on my OneNote slides, then I listen to the lectures afterwards, make my concept maps, make small quizlets, and go over that repeatedly, multiple, multiple times, just a whole lot of repetition. And then for other classes that don't go based off of the lectures, I'm reading ahead and outlining the chapter. Yes, it's assigned to me, but I'm gonna continue that if I can, if I have time for it, because I just don't wanna be blindsided with things that I should have read ahead. And I don't know, I just feel like it's something that most people do like I remember like watching a few youtubers talking about how they study for class and how they read ahead and then they listen to the lecture and then they read again and then I'm like whoa, whoa that's too much reading and then they make flashcards and then they read those flashcards and I'm like at this point I've already my my pen is is out of ink my brain is checked out so like I don't know it was a bit intimidating when I would watch other people talk about how they study for class but this has been working for me. I've been getting pretty decent grades. Um, I don't think that, you know, I'm I'm 
gonna fail <laughs> any of these classes based on my strategies I feel like it's actually been working for me but if there are classes that it doesn't work then obviously I tailor what I need to do in order to do better in that class because if it's if what I'm doing isn't working for that class then I gotta fix something I gotta make a change and I've been doing that I've been pretty good about you know realizing where I went wrong what I was doing to that wasted time what I could do more effectively more efficiently like that I feel like as as I'm going like I'm changing my ways and I'm getting better at studying like I've never been a very good studier so I feel like I need to just continue practicing on being a better student because um, I feel like I have the mental capacity to do things like I, I, I don't think that I don't understand something like, I, I haven't been like mm, I never really got it like I, I get it you know like I understand it I just feel like it's a matter of understanding it deeper like understanding the physiology of things so that you know if you get asked that question it doesn't have to be word for word from the lecture that like, you can think it through like break it down okay what are they asking I know this mechanism I know how this disease process works I know how this drug works vice versa and then you kind of are able to deduce what your answer would be even though you may not have studied those exact words you know like word for word so yeah that's pretty much how I've been studying in CRNA school it's been working for me so far I have to do my week four update for semester two which is coming next week and then I think I'm gonna do a video um, going into detail of front-loaded front versus integrated programs to compare them. Maybe if you're interested in a front-loaded program or one that's integrated, I'll kind of go over the pros and cons of each. Um, that's not going to be for next week, that's going to be for the week after. So look out for those um, coming up in the following weeks. Otherwise, um, I'm going to get back to studying. Please like this video if you haven't already. Subscribe if you want to follow along in my CRNA journey and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye!